What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And in today's video, we are gonna be looking at how you can turn any website into LLM ready data using Firecrawl. And we're also gonna show you how you can connect this with OpenAI's new real-time API voice tool so you can leverage the power of voice AI with Firecrawl to scrape any single website you want. Let's dive right into it. All right, for those of you who saw my video a few days ago, five days ago, I did a video on Crawl for AI with Cursor. And a lot of you guys really like that tool, and I really like that tool as well. Um, you can check it out. Check out the video. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, it's a really good tool. It's open source. You can pretty much crawl any website you want. And another really popular one is called Firecrawl. Okay, so this is Firecrawl. Um, power your apps with clean data crawled from any website. It's also open source. So they do have an open... It is kind of open... Like it's open source, um, but they do have a cloud version as well. So you can try it out right here. You can start for free with 500 credits if you're using cloud version. Um, sc crawl, scrape, clean, trust by different companies, integrate today, Node.js, Python, um, curl, and then crawling, dynamic content to markdown, reliability first, no caching, built for AI, different uh, case studies and testimonials. And then if you are going to pay for it, here are the different options and a bit of FAQ here, okay? Uh, I'll leave a link to the docs as well. So here's their docs. It goes over their features, which are crawl, scrape, map, and LLM extract. There's different integrations. So you can integrate with Langchang, Llama Index, Crew AI, Diffy, Flowwise, Langflow, and Camel AI. Okay, there's also contributing right here. So open source versus cloud, running locally, and self-hosting. Okay, and I also made a document right here. You guys can get access to this free document. Link for it will be down below. And it basically gives you all the different resources around this tool, Firecrawl. Um, so if you are planning on using it, it's kind of like a central resource for all the different links you would probably want to see. Also, a few different videos linked, as well as some information regarding self-hosting it. Now, I personally was having some trouble self-hosting it, um, but I did link the docs as well as a few different things I tried. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and try it out. And for the prerequisites for that, you would need... Um, there's different ways to self-host it. You can do it with Docker or, um, or not with Docker. Check out the self-hosting guide right here. If you want more information about that, I also, um, leave some information regarding how Firecrawl compares to crawl for AI. So if you want more information on that, you can check that out. Some pros and cons of each. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go over that. We're just going to dive into setting crawl for AI up, showing it in action, and then actually using it with OpenAI's real-time API. All right, so Firecrawl also has some SDKs here, Python SDK, Node SDK, Rust, and Go. They have a pretty cool blog with different examples, such as scraping job boards, using OpenAI's reasoning models in your apps, prompt caching, a bunch of different stuff. Definitely recommend checking out if you're going to be using this tool. And then the API reference right here. So it has different endpoints for scraping, crawling, uh, getting the status, canceling the crawl, and then mapping. Okay, so if you sign up for the cloud version, it's going to look like something like this. There's a playground, activity logs, usage, API keys. And you can get your API key right here. You would just copy this API key and we're going to be using it in just a second. All right, so now we're in cursor here and I have a basic fire crawl project. And I'm going to show you how I actually got here and then we're going to show you this in action and how you can actually scrape content off a website all right now you can do a lot of different things with fire crawl you can crawl you can scrape you can set different uh, parameters up and whatnot like i said i'll reference the docs down below so if you want to go more in depth you can definitely check that out um, but here was my initial prompt okay and i did some iteration afterwards but please use fire crawl and i started off asking it to use crew ai now i ended up just not using crew ai because uh, i was encountering some issues but anyways, to create a scraper where I can give the input of a website and it will scrape it and save its contents to the file uh, in a file that is named of the uh, that is na the name of the website. Create the .env, the requirements file, and the code. Read the QA uh, crew AI file do uh, and file crawl documentation carefully to ensure you have all the most recent date knowledge uh, up to date knowledge as your current training set is out of date. Okay, and if you've seen many of my other videos on Cursor AI, you'll know I always like to reference um, documentation because lots of times LLMs have outdated models. 
Okay, so this whole entire little project, a small little project, just very simple setup. I'm going to leave a GitHub repo to this down below so you guys can get it 100% for free. You can play around with it, obviously improve upon it, test it out, whatever the case may be. Within that repo, one, there's going to be this fire crawl setup right here with the um, the Python files and everything, but I'm also going to include um, the crew I'll, I'll leave the crew AI regardless, just in case you want to try it out, but I'm going to leave the fire crawl. Uh, this is all their docs, API, um, references, features, etc. So this will help you too, if you're going to be using fire crawl within cursor. So you can, you see here how I just referenced all the different documentation that I thought would maybe be necessary or useful. And yeah, you can do so pretty much very simple. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments down below, but um, that should help you out for sure to create more of a custom approach here. From that point on, it just gave me the output of what exactly I asked for, told me the instructions, obviously just pip dash r install or dash requirements.txt to install the requirements. And then there were a few different issues that came about when you run it in the terminal. Sometimes you'll just get little errors like line whatever, line this or line that. So all I simply did was I just copied the terminal and just pasted it over into cursor composer and said, here's an issue. And then cursor would resolve it. Okay. And this, it took maybe a couple iterations just because, um, sometimes I think it was referencing some outdated stuff in its training, uh, history, even with referencing the docs, but eventually it resolved everything. And let's go ahead and give this a test. All right. So I'm going to run Python firecrawl underscore script dot pi, and this is going to scrape a specific website URL. You can use different uh, API endpoints. You can crawl different things. You can do different stuff. Like I said, check out the docs, but we're going to enter the URL of strideagents.com and it is going to start scraping it. And if everything goes well, we should see content saved to strideagents.markdown right here. So if we go to strideagents right here, we can see this is literally the content of the website in markdown format all right 450 lines right here so this is good because um you know if you use cursor a lot and, or if you use any sort of llms markdown is one of the easiest things for it to read and if you're coding you're going to want to be feeding um you know markdown files to your llm to do things like feed it updated docs or do different stuff anything when it comes to training llms this is very very useful okay so that's kind of the purpose behind firecrawl so now you get a sense of how this works on a very simple scale in terms of scraping a, a simple uh url let's see it integrated into the OpenAI real-time api one thing i also forgot to mention is you're going to of course want to enter in your OpenAI api key here as well as your firecrawl api key okay so just to quickly go over one more time and like i said this is linked in the description down below for free you're going to get clone the repo right here. This is the firecrawl repo we just went over that has all the docs and all the different um, things to get you started. And you're going to CD into that folder, firecrawl dash agent, and then you're going to run code dot just to open up in VS code. You're going to change the environment variables to include your open AI API key and firecrawl keys. All right, like so. Then you're going to run pip install dash r requirements.txt. And then you're going to run python firecrawl underscore script dot pi. If you encounter any issues, just rerun those issues into cursor and it should fix them. Or if you have any dependency errors, just start up a, uh, a virtual environment. All right, then you're going to enter your website URL. Next is for the OpenAI real-time API times firecrawl. So you're going to git clone this repo right here. Okay, once you do that, you're going to cd into this repo so you're literally just going to copy and paste these two commands then once you're uh in this repo what you probably want to do again is do code dot to open this in vs code okay and once you have that you're going to run npm i okay this is going to initialize everything and install the dependencies then you're going to run npm start so this is actually going to start things up all right, so this probably will look familiar to you if you've been seeing the news around real-time AI. This is the real-time console from OpenAI, um, except this version has Firecrawl integrated into it, okay? So once you have that uh, right here ran, this will start up um, the real-time console on localhost 3000. Okay, then you're going to run npm run relay, okay? 
And just in case you're having any trouble, all these instructions are right here too. Most of them in the repo as well. So you can check that out if you need help too, but it's literally outlined right here. You copy and paste it. Next is you're gonna to want to create a .env in the repo. Okay, so you see I have the .env right here. And within the .env, you're gonna to wanna to add your OpenAI API key like so, as well as just copy and paste this local relay server URL right here. All right, this is the one that we started up right here. So you actually may want to run this after. Okay, once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go to source pages console dot or console page dot txx, and you're gonna to wanna to search for fc dash okay so all right so within the console page right here which i said is in pages console page we're going to search for fc and then dash okay i already my, i don't have that in here anymore because i removed mine but that's going to take you to the two in, uh two in, uh, references of the firecrawl api key and you really have two options you can either just hard code your api key in there so just literally copy and paste your api key right where it says fc because that's the the just the placeholder or what you could do is just um you could uh basically make the whole line look like this so just paste this right over the whole entire line for the api key in those two instances make sure you do it in both and then you're just going to have to add react app firecrawl api key into the environment variable location and then you could just you put your actual api key there okay once you do that and i hope that makes sense if you have any questions about that let me know but it's literally outlined there so it's meant so you can literally just copy and paste those instructions and you should have this up and running no problem once you do that let's go ahead and test this thing and see if it actually works okay so you can either use manual or vad right here we'll just use vad for this this is basically automatic and we're going to connect are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents, AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. Hello there. How can I assist you today? Hey, please use the scrape data tool that you have to scrape info on Josh, P-O-C-O-C-K. I've got the information from joshpeck.com. It appears to be a part. No, not the website. Use Google and use the scrape data for searching for Josh, P-O-C-O-C-K. I apologize for the confusion. Unfortunately, I'm unable to use the scrape data tool to search Google right now. Is there another way I can assist you? Let Not Josh Peck, Josh P-O-C-O-C-K. I see, but I'm not able to directly search Google or scrape. Just use the scrape data like you just did to use Google and search for Josh Pocock. I found some information on Josh Peck. He's the founder and CEO of executivestride.com, a business coaching platform that has helped generate over 30,000 plus qualified appointments in the last eight months. You can find more about him on his LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube channel, which have all the links in the description, as well as his YouTube channel. That's some info on Josh Pocock. He's the founder and CEO of Executive Stride. Okay, so as you can see, it's, I mean, it works real time at least from what i'm using right here it's kind of annoying just in terms of i i guess for me because i guess my last name's a little complex for it to spell so it was searching josh peck and then um i think it's programmed or like almost like hard-coded or something to basically say that it can't do google searches or it really can't i guess maybe but it's using the scrape data tool to do like a search like this so you see how i had to really sometimes tell it use the scrape data tool 
because that's what it's called the scrape data tool which is the fire crawl tool that's programmed into it so you can tell it to go to a website you can tell it to do you can kind of get around the whole google thing um but yeah play around with it um this is real-time console integrated with fire crawl so i thought i'd add this in as well so you can check that out but that's pretty much it guys for this video there's the dock down below so check that out it literally has everything you need for to for getting this set up from what we went over in the video from from the basic starter repo for fire crawl as well as the uh real-time console set up here so you can try that out let me know what you think down below let me know what you guys think do you like fire crawl or do you like crawl for ai what's your favorite ai crawling tool me personally i mean i'm still trying them out more and we'll see how it goes I do really like crawl for AI, how it's just very easy to use for open source. Um, and then fire crawl is good too. They do have that cloud uh, version though. So, you know, it really depends what you're, what you like. Anyways, guys. So if you're new to the channel, we upload videos every single day on AI automation, AI coding, business, marketing, sales, etc. So if you got some value from this video and like that type of content, make sure to smash that like button and smash subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads. Also too, guys, if you haven't already joined strivecommunity.com, our free Facebook group and discord channel, link to that will be in the description down below. And lastly, if you do run a business and you need help booking appointments on autopilot, let's say you run a call center, you have appointment setters that you're actually paying humans like five, three, five, 10 K, whatever it is a month to book appointments for you. And you want to automate that at scale with AI appointment setting agents, then make sure to check out strideagents.com. Link to that will be in the description down below. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding. And of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.